What's up, Buckeye Nation? You're tuned in to the Buckeye Cast, coming at you loud and proud, bringing strong opinions and salty humor to Ohio State football. These fellas were born and bred in the Buckeye State, and their brand of banter is guaranteed to entertain and excite you. But if you're not a Buckeye, don't bother. Visit us at thebuckeyecast.com and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at the Buckeye Cast to stay up to date on all things Ohio State football. And be sure to subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Now here's your host, Joe Warwick. What's up, Buckeye Nation? Here we go again. Here we are. This is November. November is to remember or forget if you lose. Uh, got my guy, Sean Henry, up in Detroit. Coming at you behind the UM lines. Uh, What's up, y'all? Yeah, that's the big dog. Let's take this podcast like a pick six back to the house, Henry. All right, let's do this. All right. He's got the info on the MSU versus UM game. Uh, I did watch that. I did watch that. It sounded like a brutal watch. Um, Very happy that uh, Sparty covered. Uh, high five on that one. That's right. Go Sparty. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how horrible the uh, finish was, whatever. So anyway, let's uh, let's jump right in with both feet and a punch in the face with this Northwestern game. Uh, more of the same, unfortunately, uh, the way I see it. Uh, Henry, I'm going to ask you for your, your quick take on, on, uh, on how you saw this 24-20 win happen. Well, it wasn't pretty. I mean, you know, I, I look at the stat sheet, and the stat sheet doesn't look terrible, you know. Yeah. Fair. You look at the numbers, looks fairly efficient. Uh, ran the ball 13 times. That's about where I like to see him running a ball, I'd say. That's the upper kind of limit. Um, but I I don't know. Am I, am I a spoiled fucking brat, or can I get a high-functioning offense? It's just everything we do... It didn't seem like our numbers were that good. It seemed a lot, uh, a lot more clunky. Everything's hard to get on our offense. I feel we right. don't just roll. That first drive looked good, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think we're using the talent that's on that team. I and agree. It's a shame. I agree, hundred uh, percent. Another, another fast start. Nice, efficient offense marches down the field. Nine plays, touchdown into the end zone, uh, but. Where's that? Why does that leave us? Why does that not stay in place? I, I don't know if it's scripting the first so many plays that it helps us, or if the defense is adjusting so quickly on the fly that uh, maybe the script is out the window, and we need to just um, just adjust to the adjustments. You know. Uh, like I, I was really happy with the fast start. We were we had tempo, uh, very efficient, moved the ball quickly, uh, but then things just fell apart in the second half. I don't I don't get it. Again, we were outscored in the second half, ten to seven. Yeah, there's no reason for that in a Buckeye game against Northwestern. No, at home. Right. I I don't get it. Uh, I it seems like. Uh, the play calling tightens up or gets super conservative in the second half. I, I, I don't. Who's calling it, Warner or Beck? Well, yeah. That uh, actually, um, I got to give props to uh, I believe it was Dave Biddle from Twenty Four Seven from Bucknuts. Uh, he actually asked Tim Beck the other day exactly what is the process for play calling and Beck just hemmed and hawed had no real answer he's like well it you know it goes this way it's different every time you know it's well, like geez. yeah it, that's not a that's whole lot not of nothing experience. yeah a whole lot of nothing um it was really frustrating to listen to because it, it's like listening to a politician speak you know you feel like you get a better straight answer from herb honestly which is not saying much um, so anyway, uh, I, I was reading a board earlier today that was talking about uh, Beck came from Nebraska. Like we warned you, told you he sucked. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm on board with that. Um, 
uh, to, to get back on the Northwestern game, though, uh, like I said, we were outscored in the second half. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how we only score one touchdown in the second half. Um, Herb is typically known for making those halftime adjustments like any great coach. And it seems like our adjustments are being over-adjusted or under-adjusted or whatever. <laughs> I don't see any adjustments. Um, the only change I saw was that Samuel went from running in the first half to catching balls in the second half. That's it. Did not yield anything, though. So uh, it went into uh, deep in the, almost deep into the fourth. We, we scored with uh, 10 minutes left in the fourth and held on, but that's just because the defense was playing great. Um, I don't know. The, the play calling is getting really predictable. You know, it's, it's a, a run on first, a short pass on second, and then a JT run on third down. You know, uh, is that how you see it? Are you seeing something different? Here's another thing that when you when when you get a little bit deeper into the stats on on the Barrett, the 21 for 32. You know that sounds okay. Hey, it's efficient, 223 yards, blah blah blah. But there were Curtis Samuel had seven receptions. Mm -hmm. um, Noah Brown had five, and Weber had three. Everyone else on the team had one. Yeah. And again, nobody's stepping up. Uh, and and the one and the one guy that's not stepping up at all in my book is is Dontre Wilson. Um, Dontre Wilson had three rushes for negative two yards. Yep. And one reception for four yards. You're either helping or you're in the way. And I, I man, I was hoping. I thought. Dontre Wilson's going to break out, but I don't know what's going on there. He hasn't done anything for me this year, honestly. I agree with that uh, getting in the way thought because, especially on um, special teams, he's not doing anything, man. He had he averages like what five to seven yards a punt return. Come on, I understand you want to you want to actually um, get the the change of possession, make the reception, you know, but you got to do something with it. Just catching the ball is not enough. I mean, Herb always says he wants to be aggressive on special teams. Just making the catch and getting a few yards is not fucking aggressive. Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's out there and I'm just missing something and I didn't rewatch the game. Maybe there's intangible stuff that Dante's doing that I'm just not seeing. Well, he's not a great blocker. I'll, I'll say that first. Um, Zach Smith was on the call-in show today. Uh, today's Thursday, anyway. Um, and he said his best blockers are Noah Brown and uh, Paris Campbell. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. So... I, I don't think an H-back is going to be a good blocker, except maybe Samuel. I could see him putting a hurt on somebody inside. But they're yeah, just, he has no fear. Yeah, they're just typically not in position to make blocks downfield. You know, that's not where they're at. So it makes sense for a receiver to be a better blocker downfield. So, yeah, again, just, just uh, getting back to the predictability with a play calling, uh, I I still got to wonder what Tim Beck is doing up in the press box. I think he's just making coffee for Ed Warner and asking him how he likes it with cream or sugar. I think he's pretty much useless. He definitely has not developed JT into a better quarterback. You you, you can't tell me that JT is a better quarterback from 2014 to today. Hey, I, I can't argue that. I, I I don't know what's going on down there, but it's. It's something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, it's it's really frustrating. Anyway, um, if if Beck is having any input on the play calling, maybe we should give him a rest. You know, maybe take a few plays off. You know. Um, yeah. Just let's let's you play. You got a lot of kids on that team. Yeah. Let's let's be a little creative with the offense. I mean, wh how how come? This uh, Austin Carr 
can bust off eight for a buck fifty eight on us. Yeah. We don't got a guy as good as Austin Carr. Yeah. Uh, we should have six guys as good as Austin Carr. Yeah, uh, yeah. Getting to the defense, I, I agree. Um, that was the most frustrating thing. This guy was running wild in the secondary out of the slot position, yeah. and uh, I've seen. I saw Damon Webb not stay up with him, and I saw Arnett getting toasted on these out routes multiple times. Uh, he's, I, th- I believe he scored a touchdown on the uh, Webb play. I believe Webb was in coverage on him. But Webb was so far off the goddamn ball, he had no chance to even make a play. You know? Uh, really frustrating coverage. They're going to have to fix that up because you can't have slot guys just running wild, you know, with out routes in in just green pastures. where no. I know. So... That's got to be tightened up, and that's a, that's a scheme issue on the defense. Definitely that's a Shiano issue and Kerry Combs somewhat, but mostly Shiano. Shiano's really uh, – hey, Why can't we have an offense that where receivers run wide open like that all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, again, that's, that's an ongoing issue on the offense. Um, uh, we're not getting the separation – I say this all the time. I know you probably get sick of it, but I would love to see an all twenty-two. I wish some. I wish the colleges would have to release that tape because they're the only ones that own it. You know, the 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 networks don't have an all twenty-two look from overhead. So right. I, I would love to see uh, who is getting open, not getting open, who's getting separation as a receiver, who's not. You know, uh, maybe we got to start playing running some rub routes and and some of those mesh routes, you know, where guys are crossing and a DB gets picked off on another receiver to get guys open. I mean, this is very elementary stuff. This is stuff that uh, people have been doing for decades. Hey, I don't don't know what the answer is. Maybe that's that. Maybe it's something else. I don't know, but try something. Yeah, exactly. If individual effort by the receivers is not getting them them open, then something needs to, needs to change just like if uh you're getting a lot of pressure on a quarterback okay and your your front five are not getting it done then you keep a, a running back in the chip or you keep a tight end in to help block you right know, that's what i'm saying is you you change the scheme and i believe that uh our offensive staff is very very slow to change the scheme you know I'm not saying they don't have the plays in the playbook. I have to assume they do. It's just they're not changing to those plays. I know. Well, it just makes me wonder. It's like, are they that vanilla, or are they just so afraid to open it up a little bit because they 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 see something that we don't get to see because we're not in there every day, right. you know? But I just I, I don't understand why you won't because it's it's cost us, frankly, against Penn State. And you know what? If if we keep playing like we've played. We're gonna have another loss. Yeah, easily. And, and I think I'm I'm gonna harp on this till the day I die. The play calling against Michigan State last year that cost us the game by not giving the ball to Zeke hurt us. And again Garbage. this year, it's it's slightly different in that the play calling, not adjusting the receivers and the staff that's on the field, is hurting us. I think it's a combo play calling plus um, uh, guys on the field. But the know? Penn State loss, they weren't getting Samuel the ball either, though, were they? They were right. he busted off the long run, but they didn't. Yeah, I don't remember. That was it. But yeah. fuck. And that's that's the frustrating thing is Samuel's. They they keep they keep emphasizing fifteen touches a game, fifteen touches. Okay, he got fucking fourteen this week. Last week he got like nine or something, if that. I forget. Um, so maybe we uh, kind of go over fifteen once. Well, I wouldn't but, mind that. You know, I mean, JT goes well over twenty carries sometimes. So, just my opinion. That's all. Um, well, get get him in space. Get him creative. You know, I. The guy's tough to tackle one on one. Yeah. Yeah, I want to run through a couple of few more issues that I noticed watching that game. Um, 
Noah Brown, this guy has to play more. Has to. And he needs the ball more. I don't care. You just and you know how I keep saying if he's if he's in man coverage, he's open. He's a beast. Go give him the ball, put it where he can go get it and nobody else. This is not fucking rocket science, man. He makes tough catches inside. He had that uh the tunnel screen that he got hit by like six dudes around the line of scrimmage and got out for a five or six yard uh, gainer. Then on the slant, he got pounded. The dude fucking makes a catch. He's got hands. You know, he, yeah, I, I understand he's big, not, strong, right. fast. He's a fucking tight end at receiver in college. Anyway. Yeah, he, he's a beast. So Total beast. Up with you. I mean, feed him. Corners hate lining up against him. Oh, yeah. Because you're not gonna you're not gonna get hands on him. He's just gonna swim move over you or or push you off, you know. Yeah, he's so, bigger than you. He's stronger than you. He's yeah. faster than you. <laughs> yeah, he's he's taller. He's he's got twenty pounds on any corner that lines up against him. So. Oh yeah, does he go two twenty? And I think that's yeah. generous. I bet you he's he two thirty. Yeah, he might he's be. He's a beast. Yep. and he lost weight. So I know. Yeah. Feed that fucking guy. If, if if you're gonna throw the ball, that should be your first option every play, in my opinion. And I think he needs to be out there more often. You know. Yeah, he's that money guy. You know, yeah. I don't think he's gonna. Uh, he's not slow, but he's not gonna break the super long ones. I don't yeah. think. But he's he's gonna be so money. I mean, you could just churn right down the field with Noah Brown. Remember last time we played at Sparty, and uh, I believe it was 2014, and JT. We came out throwing the ball like uh, the entire first series, maybe the second series too, and we were hitting Michael Thomas nonstop on slants, short routes. Yeah, and he was getting open just to get JT some confidence. That's what I yeah. think you need to go back to that that type of play calling. If if we're not going to try to go deep, which apparently we're not, um, get get JT in this rhythm, you know, and and start uh, hitting these short routes to to Noah because he's definitely going to make the plays, you know, and you can move the ball, and that's going to open up the run, you know. And and the deep pass, if we ever decide to throw one. Yeah, I saw one. I saw one Saturday. Did not get completed, shockingly. They never get completed. That's yeah. why we don't throw them anymore. I, I don't want to give up on it. I just want us to execute better. Yeah. Yeah, James Clark was uh, – I thought he, he could have made that catch uh, – I believe it was the first half. Um, didn't have a lot of air under it. It was kind of a a, a short short pass, but uh, it looked catchable to me. It was a little bit on the outside where the receiver should want it. Um, he had he had plenty of room to stay in bounds and make the catch over his shoulder. Maybe it's just a lack of experience out there. I assume that they make these plays in practice, you know, regularly. So. That one looked catchable, but again, if you're only throwing one per game, that's a terrible percentage pass. Right. So, yeah, uh, those are those were my major issues. Again, uh, one thing though, I, I got to bang on Mike Weber. Uh, typically, tough kid, right? We'll go inside, get you know, banging yeah. around with the big boys on these swing passes and screen passes where he was the outlet and and maybe the last option. Yeah. He. Uh, Routinely ran out of bounds, with where he could have either cut back in or put his helmet in a DB's gut and gotten three, four, five yards. Uh, I watched the uh, thirty-minute version a couple times, and this happened multiple times with him. Yeah, I think I remember some of it. Uh, you know, though, I, I I think he was getting hit pretty good most of that game, and once in a while. Uh, depends on the situation. Okay. Um, that, that's just the way I saw it. Uh, it seemed like we're he... Gonna, we're going to need Weber, man. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm for taking a little bit less load on him. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why Curtis Samuel's in there, too. He can he can take more carries, you know, than seven. You know, I think if you ask him, how do you feel? He'd be like, give me the goddamn ball, you know? So... Yeah, I think he'd like 10 to 12 carries... And yeah, five to six catches. Yeah, 
Especially on those swing passes, Samuel can get upfield in a hurry, and the kid always falls forward. I mean, I've never seen a DB or anybody on on defense, honestly, take him backwards. Yeah, that's true. Because he's nasty. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, nine players with catches was nice. Uh, like you said, though, a lot of guys nobody just had... Se- nobody separating. Right. Exactly. It's, it's just the same problem we've had since week one. Um, O line played better. I'll give him that. Uh, still had con- some inconsistencies in the run game. I saw Weber getting stopped uh, short in between the tackles a lot. Um, that's got to get shored up. And uh, maybe guys are dinged up. You know, I know that uh, Jamarco and Isaiah Prince were a little dinged after last week. So uh, we'll see what happens. They also used uh, Brandon Bowen last week as an extra tight end. They changed uh-huh. his number and brought him in as a, an extra blocker. So that that helped with, with the um, movement up front. The, he would be, if any of the tackles went down, he would sub in at left or right or whatever. So he's, he's a good backup, but uh, this might be the time of year where that lack of depth comes into play, you know, like losing that Malcolm Bridge and the JUCO transfer might yeah. come, in, come to hurt us, you know, if, if somebody goes down. Well, and, you know, I think some of our younger kids were getting some good playing time early in the season when we were blowing people out. Yeah. But, uh, shit, they haven't played in a month. Right. Exactly. And they they probably won't, you know, a, a barring injury. You know, maybe they get in late against Maryland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can only hope. Um, so yeah, to polish off this. Uh, well, I got one thing. Go ahead. Yeah. A little bit. Um, so this Thorson, yes. he he dropped back forty four times, and we only had one sack by Taekwon Lewis. I expect better than that against Northwestern. If you're going to drop back forty four times, I expect better than one sack. Mm. Against Northwestern, I just do. I agree. With so, that. I I can't say. I'm just looking at the stat sheet. Um, maybe they caused a lot of havoc. But what the kid had one pick, and that's because it was a tip ball. Yeah. Um, Break one. So I'm. Um, I didn't love with the with the D line, especially when we're rotating that many guys in, and we we got fresh legs against Northwestern's O line. we mm. we get one sack. Yeah. Come on. I. Yeah, Taekwon played played well. Uh, he, he also had a TFL. Um, Draymond Jones showed up. Uh, he, he had a, a, some quiet numbers, in my opinion. Um, he had a, a TFL and uh, four solos. Um, and I think he was graded out as a champion by her. I saw that, man. I, we've had a couple games where some D tackles show out, man. I, I appreciate that. That's that's effort. Michael Hill's been pretty silent. Um, he was kind of, I, he was ex- expected to be well in the, the first half of the season, and uh, he really didn't show up much. But it seems like he's coming around. He he had the one tackle, and it was a tackle for loss. But um, I do before we we get out of this this uh, Northwestern game, I gotta talk, John, my new guy. This is my new stud, EGW. This dude is a fucking <laughs> special teams missile. That dude comes down the fucking field looking to blow somebody up. This guy, I love the way he plays. I can't wait to see him on the field on defense, man. This kid is nuts. He he does get down there in a hurry. That For a little fucking hurt. five niner. Oh my god. You think he's gonna? I'm. When, when does he ever make the field? He's been in the program. This is his second year, right? Uh, is it? I thought he was a freshman. Uh, I think I this is the second year. Oh, God, i got to look that up. And but, so if, 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 if that's true, when does he get on the field? But I, I read something today that they were using him as the uh, on the scout team yeah. for Armstrong. Yeah, because Armstrong is... Uh, 
a dual threat guy, so they use EGW as uh, the running uh, aspect of, of uh, the quarterback. Yeah, I guarantee EGW is better, faster than Armstrong. Yeah, he is a sophomore. God damn it. Yeah, so that's my only thing is it his size because I don't know when he's ever going to get on the field. I know. I mean, he's got Arnett and Ward in front of him, and we got some boys coming in next year. Oh, yeah. Jordan Fuller and at safety. I think EGW, his only shot is corner. It can't be safety. Yeah, gotta, no way he's getting safety. No, we got some big safeties. But I love the way he, he hits, man. He just he does. Oh, but you know what? I, you know that's what everybody says. That's how you play your way onto his team. Yep. You know, special teams, and yep. no one. I'm, I'm with you. No one brings it harder than EGW on special teams. Yep. It makes tackle. Yeah, it's fun to watch. So, um, and uh, one more note on the negative point of view is uh, that motherfucking redheaded kangaroo had another punt block. I <laughs> Back to back weeks. Have he ever had a punt block before these last two weeks? Not that I remember. No. Me either. This is back to back, and these are key changes in the game. You know, these are late. Yeah. So, and we got to get that short up, man. This is all on Herb. This is his baby, the special teams. So, um, like last week with the the kick block. And then the two punt blocks. Uh, I'm not sure what the issue is, if it's a uh, uh, a staff issue on the field or what. You know, uh, is somebody injured and we got guys filling in? What the hell's the deal? So that's got to get cleaned up. You're not going to go far in November if you're getting fucking kicks blocked regularly. Yeah, no, that's, those tend to yeah. hurt you. Late in games. Ask Michigan last year. Yeah. Or Michigan State. Who was it? Not me, Michigan. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, any, anything else you want to touch on to uh, recap this Northwestern game, put a lid on it? No, that's that's just about it. And uh, hats off to Northwestern. Uh, they played tough. So maybe I'm, you know, again, a spoiled brat. But um, I, the Big Ten's solid. And I think when you play in Ohio State, you know, that's a – it's a big game for you. I don't know if kids ever play harder or whatever, but I don't know. That's you got to get up when you're playing Ohio State. And so, hats off to Northwestern. Good game, man. Does it seem like we say this every week? That team was a lot yeah. better than we thought. Those words. It seems like I say that every fucking week this season. Well, I, because it's true, and 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 it's true to the extent that that's true. These teams are better than I thought they were, but. We're also not as good as I thought we were either. I mean, or at least we haven't been playing like it. Offensively. It's been offensive. I'm offended. So, yeah, it just seems like this seems to be a running theme over the last few weeks. You know, didn't didn't know they were that good. Didn't know they were that good. Oh, they were that good? Really? I didn't know that. Well, I hope we know Nebraska's that good because... I don't know if you're about to segue into that, but they sure. are pretty good. Sure. Let's go through the wall on that one. <laughs> These boys are number 10 in the college football pool. Uh, so if that does anything for you, or are they like seven in the AP, I believe, something like that. Um, a night game again. So uh, ESPN's carrying this, of course. Uh, at least it's in the shoe. Um, these guys are not coming off a bye, unlike Wisconsin and Penn State going into those games. Those guys both came off byes. Uh, so these guys actually got beat up a little bit uh, coming out of the overtime loss to Whiskey last week. Um, that, I believe that was in Whiskey, yeah. So yeah. they jumped around on their ass in overtime. Um for the Buckeyes, uh, Paris Campbell has a high ankle sprain. Uh, they're saying he might play. I don't know if we should expect much. Um, said he was out there running around today at practice, so I'm sure they'll they'll keep a watchful eye on that. 
Well, he hasn't done much so far, so I it, I don't know why he'd rush something like that. I don't think, you know, yeah. by the way Warner and Beck call it, he's not a key cog in our offense. Right. Um, he's out there a lot, but he's doing a lot of blocking. And, and uh, like Zach Smith said, he's, he's one of their best blockers at receivers. Yeah. So, you know. That's uh, true. We always like to use those guys. Mm-hmm. Well, he's explosive, too. We just don't seem to get him the ball. Right. And another person that doesn't seem to get the ball enough. So, yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see what this kid can do. Yeah, he's on the list. Yeah, um, get in line. Yeah. So, yeah, like I mentioned, they're coming off a loss to Wisconsin, which kind of played that kind of played their way out of the uh, uh, Big Ten West Um for the championship game. So, Not if they beat us. Right. If they beat us, then they're in good shape, but they lost to Wisconsin. So we'll see what Wisconsin does the rest of the year too. Um, so we got uh, this Tommy Armstrong Jr. Got his name right. Finally, Nebraska person, Tommy quarterback, <laughs> last name Armstrong Jr. I've got it. Uh, he does have seven picks on the season. Uh, he likes to whip it around. Uh, Eleven touchdowns, you know, no big deal. But uh, this kid will will cough it up at uh, any given point if if he feels some pressure. So obviously that's that's where we need to uh, focus as a defense is is pressure, and then I have confidence in the secondary to ball hawk this fucker. Tommy Armstrong Jr. is a bum. He. He's thrown under 40% like two out of the last three games. He He's terrible. Is he a good athlete? Yes, but I don't think he has any idea how to run an offense. If, if, if Shiano and company and Fickle can't figure out how to beat this guy and get inside his head, then fucking shame on us. Yeah. I mean, uh, looking at their their regular season they really haven't done much of anything they put up 52 on wyoming bfd um they they really have a tough time scoring 30 against a, a quality opponent they put on uh 35 on oregon and only beat them by three uh 24 against northwestern 31 against illinois 27 against indiana so these guys are not really lighting it up uh, on offense, I, I think they're really at this point relying on their defense to keep them in games, uh, which the defense is, is still giving up a little bit of points. So the defense is solid. The defense yeah. is stout. Um, I would which say is surprising. Yeah, I wouldn't say the black shirts are back in the house yet, but it's going to be a while, if ever, until we see those. They're they're what they're like twentieth in defense or something like that. Um, with a quarterback that the problem with Tommy Armstrong Jr. and how long he's been playing for them forever, but he is. He's usually garbage, but there's two or three games a year where he looks like he should be the Heisman guy and totally yeah. crushes somebody. Right. And we just can't let that be against us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ideally. That would be nice. Um, yeah. You know, he's going to have those breakout games. It's just a matter of, of our defense uh, keeping him contained when he's going to get outside the pocket. As you saw with uh, freak-ass Thorson last week, getting loose in the secondary and, and uh, rumbling for 30-plus. Jeez. Uh, you know, that was extremely frustrating, and w- this is not the first time we've seen that from our team. You know, so uh, guys got to stay home, contain. Uh, I believe I, I, I believe that's the second. I mean, uh, the linebackers' responsibility. So if they see this guy getting loose, they gotta they gotta be ready. You know, I don't I don't think you necessarily want to put a spy on him or something, but you have to do something to to keep him contained and and in the backfield or at least reduce his his gainers. You know. I think maybe a half spy on him with McMillan. Okay. And I, th- I think McMillan had a good game uh, last week, last couple of weeks, frankly. I, you know me, I've been banging on him all year. 
Yeah. Well, he's starting to play it. I think he, I think the game's slowing down for him a little bit. I think he's going a little bit faster. I think he can still get a little bit better. But once, you know, if he keeps progressing the way he has over the last few weeks and keeps playing at this high level, then the silver bullets are back that D is about to get nasty. Um, I, I think we got to go. I, I think we start red somewhere. Um, the, on first and second down, we were almost always uh, playing a zone. And then on third down, we go into our man. So, I, again, I, I always just think with with our talent, we should be manning up. You know, you keep a safety back for to help, but we ought to be manning up on just about everybody a lot and just be playing more aggressive. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, I, I thought our, our defensive mindset was always press man on the outside and uh, two high safeties. So I, I don't know why that should be changing, if it is. That's somewhat concerning if, if it's changing now. Um, that's kind of the, the Chris Ash philosophy that he brought in. So I mean, I, I actually think you – yeah, I love where – I like our corners. I like Conley. I like Lattimore. And keep ball hawk – Barrel or Hooker back there, yeah. and 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 let Webb come up and play the uh, the run a little bit. Yeah, blitz a linebacker, blitz Jerome Baker, McMillan once in a while. Yeah, I agree. I love bringing guys off the edge. Um, it's rare that we see a corner blitz, but I'm hugely in favor of a corner blitz bring uh, Lattimore or somebody off the edge and get to the quarterback, that, that's a game changer if, if he doesn't get picked up. you know. Uh, I don't mind throwing one in there here and there. You can't get too happy with the corner blitzes. Those can bite you in the ass. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you, you don't want to do that every other play because uh, teams will get, will get wise to it quickly. But um, well, yeah, a well-timed one where the quarterback's been getting hit, yeah. and now he's he's looking to throw quick. He's not even looking to his blind side at all, and then you throw that in there and smash him. Yeah, you always got to come from the backside, otherwise, you know, it's kind of pointless. Right. So, and and the D line just needs to contain. So, yeah, I, I love that. Uh, I, I think this is going to be an easy W for us, relatively. I think, you know, you know how Herb responds. I know we did not respond last week. Or the um, week before. <laughs> or the week before. I'm talking post-loss. Post-taking a loss. Things come together. I, I know the stat sheet last week looked good. The scoreboard did not look great. I don't think the scoreboard really reflected um, the quality of, of the offense. I think we we kind of underscored, if that's possible, or if that's even a word. Um, I think I think we're going to put these boys in their place, and, and I think they're beat up too, uh, coming off that that OT loss to Wisconsin. That that could be a kick in the face, you know. It could be, and I would have said. Um... Up until they just lost, I actually thought Nebraska was a complete fraud. But then they gave Wisconsin everything Wisconsin could handle. Mm -hmm. And now I think, uh, these guys are a pretty good football team. And to think it's going to be easy, I I, I think we win, but I think we're in another tough football game. Okay. Yeah, I I have not had faith in Nebraska since, like, the 90s. So, honestly, uh, I I think they skated on a bunch of fucking patsies here. Um, For the yeah. most part, like I said, I thought they were fraud until they just played Wisconsin to the bone. Yeah, I think Wisconsin maybe was was on a hangover from us as well, potentially. So, you you want to? Go ahead and serve up some predictions while we're we're trying to seal up this sucker. I predict uh, you you want my scores right now? Yeah, I got them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got twenty eight twenty Buckeyes. Oh, jeez. Still don't break thirty, huh? No. Jesus Christ. Look, we our offense has not been sharp. Nebraska, you look at it statistically, they got a better D than anyone we've been playing lately. 
So maybe I'd have to. I don't know where whiskey falls in there, but Nebraska's like twenty in the country on total yards. I yeah. whiskey's nine. So okay. Uh, well, it took us overtime to score in the twenties with them too. Right. That's a good ass defense. I'll put that defense up against anybody in the Big Ten, man. Michigan included. Um, I know Michigan's number one in the country, but let me know when they play somebody other than Wisconsin. I'm telling you, if Raekwon takes it to the next level, there ain't going to be nobody who's these better than Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Well, did you happen to see the interview with Raekwon this week? Just I to, did not. If you want to drill down into him real quick. Um, he gave actually a uh, almost a an ordered list of his responsibilities on every given play. And it's very interesting. Um, the kid has a lot of on, a lot of responsibilities on his plate. Uh, I won't read it off to you unless you want me to. Uh, but it's a, a list of like seven things. And uh, I, I can see why the kid is not uh, having the most uh, the greatest statistical game or, or season of his career. But um, I think he's also being targeted by the opposing offenses. So I'm, I'm going to give him a, uh, a pass. I don't know if he's a first-round draft pick right now, but I'm, I'm going to default to him. I think he's, he's a good player. Um, I, I think he's a good player, too. I think he is. Um, I don't think he's playing to his ability. I think he could be. Okay. I think he could be Randy Katzenmoyer, crazy fucking good player. All right. Yeah, I would love to see that that quality. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> that's different level shit right there. But I would love to see it. Okay, so you got us at uh, what twenty eight twenty? Yeah. A little twenty twenty and twenty. Twenty twenty and twenty. <laughs> um, I'm going to go uh, I think we cracked the 30 mark we're going to bust through that seal I'm going to go 38 Whoa. 20 38 20 uh, I hate seeing the defense give up 20 points but we saw it last week and that was extremely frustrating in my book that's a defensive let down you wanted to go 37-20, but you can't talk yourself out of it because your money line's 17, isn't it? Yeah. That, <laughs> you had to make it 18. Yeah. <laughs> Nail bite it to the end. Well, it's uh, five touchdowns and a field goal. You know, I can't mix when's it the last time? When's the last time we've done that? Yeah. Mix in a safety. I'm fine with Rutgers? that, too. Was Rutgers the last time we did that? Might have been. Yeah. It's, so. it's, it's been a long season. Don't forget... Oh no! Don't forget, this is the uh, this is November. This is the last third of the season, so if we're dividing it into chunks. So uh, my point is just let's enjoy November. Whew, it's As, tough November. It's 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 three tough games. Yep, it's gonna be the stretch. Yep, and you almost have to say to not not sleep on uh, Maryland either. You know. Uh, you don't want to want to get bogged down looking ahead to Michigan State and Michigan back to back the following weeks. So, I mean, yeah. this is this is a, this is quite the this is quite the hill to climb for these young Buckeyes. Though we'd still have to play, you know, a top ten team right now, Nebraska, mm-hmm. top five team, Michigan. Then we'd have to go back and probably play Wisconsin. Is going to be six at the time again to make it into the playoff, and then beat two of the top four. It's it's a lot of work to do, man. It's time to start chopping wood. Yeah, I think there's too much wood to chop. Uh, I I do appreciate that the uh, college football playoff committee is is taking the uh, strength of schedule into account first and foremost. That really helps us. And that probably helps us being uh, number six, you know. Well, I don't know because Texas A and M's blowout loss gets them in. Oh. I no, 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 no. I, I uh, 
that they're going to come back down to earth. You know, this Washington is, can be ahead of us now. Even yes. Louisville can be ahead of us now, but not A and M. I don't uh, know. I don't know about Louisville, but uh, Washington, yeah, I'll give you that. A&M has no business up there. They're going to come back down to reality real quick. And uh, I know. Who's looking at this with the yeah, A&M? Yeah, these guys are a fucking joke. Uh, just because they're in the SEC. Well, and the good ones come against Tennessee, who's garbage. Right. And... <laughs> And yeah, they're freaking running backs transferring out already. Those guys were in the top ten just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, they lost by like three scores to Alabama. Yeah. Yeah that 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 program quickly in a matter of a couple weeks at Tennessee anyway went from being uh, top ten contenders taking people to the wire winning late in games against good quality SEC opponents to going to a dumpster fire in just a matter of a few weeks. Come on, you know, they're they're probably about to get busted with some sanctions. Tennessee is filthy dirty. Oh, fuck yeah. Those guys are in big trouble. Um, their coach is a dirtball. Over, <laughs> over-signing son of a bitch. He takes on 35 dudes a class and they got they have, no they have room. Tons of Fucking broads waiting for those dudes. <laughs> <laughs> the welcome wagon, fuck yes, dressed in orange. So, yeah, um, maybe sometime we'll we'll try and work in some uh, playoff, uh, college football playoff, you know, kind of breakdown of the the top five and and give our quick opinions, kind of like we just did. <laughs> maybe we'll we'll try and make this a uh, uh, regular thing going going forward over the last four weeks of the season, you know. Uh, one thing I got to mention before we we sign off: huge, huge, huge recruiting weekend in Columbus. You see how many dudes are coming in? Holy! I, I saw a headline, shit. but I did, I did not see who's yeah, all coming. It's a who's who of the 2017, 2018 classes. Uh, that Brandon, or I mean, I'm sorry, Bubba Bolden, the uh, safety com- coming from Bishop Gorman. He's being accompanied by Tyjon Lindsay, Tate Martell. Of course, uh, uh, Garrett's already there in Columbus, so on the team. So these guys are bringing him in, and I think I, th- I think we could be on commitment watch this weekend. That dude's a really? stud. Yeah, isn't, isn't that uh, is that five star linebacker coming up from Texas? Oh yeah, um, uh, what's his name? Bear. I forget his fucking name. Yeah, oh, but it, I like five star linebackers. It is going to be stacked and packed with fucking recruits this weekend in Columbus, man. He's a dude. Night game. It should it should be wild. Better yeah. give it a show. Yeah, those girls on campus are going to be worn out. I mean, uh, by you know showing them around. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anywho, let's uh. Let's polish this sucker off. Uh, any, anything else you want to close out with? Uh, any Nebraska thoughts? No, just uh, come on, man. My, uh, I'm watching these offensive coordinators. Show me something. Be creative. Do a little tempo. I feel like we always have success when we're running tempo, uh, at least more times than not. Yeah. And uh, Do something creative. Make the offense work. Yeah, let's. let's uh, I, I'm. I'm quickly gonna put a microscope on these cocksuckers, Tim Beck and Ed Warner, and uh, half a microscope on Urban Meyer since he gets total veto power. Uh, that's where my microscope's going, um, and that's just strictly offense. I know, defense will be fine. <laughs> uh, I'll put a microscope on on uh, the Nickelbacks, Arnett. Um, We'll see. No, yeah, I, I was thinking about uh, Warner Beck for the microscope, and then, you know, then I saw Dontre Wilson's stat line from last game, and so I changed it to Dontre Wilson. Like oh, I said, yeah. show, show out or get out of the way. Yeah, he's a fucking senior. Do something. I know. You know. And on defense, uh, again, going back every week, McMillan. 
watching Raekwon like a fucking stalker. And I, I, he keeps progressing like he has the last few weeks. I feel, I feel real good about the Buckeye defense yeah. going forward, and we're going to need it. We're going to need it. All right. So that's what I got. I like it. I like it. Thank you, Buckeye Nation, for listening to us. We took that sucker to the house, didn't we? Did we go 90 on that? 95? I think I pitched it to you somewhere around midfield. Way to take it in. Sorry, sorry Tribe, about good effort. Oh, oh, last second kick in the face. Yeah, good effort, Tribe. You know, get back there next year, like Bron says. You know, use it as fuel. Um... Best of luck to you. Sorry to uh, to Joe Omler. You know, give you a little shout out to you. I uh, was hoping hoping you guys would win, especially since I have five bucks on the fucking game. Um, so, good luck next year, and uh, maybe someday I'll start watching baseball again. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, all right, Buckeye Nation, let's go kick some corn husker ass this weekend let's go let's get into this game this is this is november this is where it all matters if you haven't watched at all this year i understand it's been pretty boring you got to watch these last four weeks this is huge this is all leading up to the culmination against michigan this is going to be a monster ending to the season uh, i'm i'm hyped for it i know henry's hyped for it i go Jeff's MIA. We're going to get him back on here for at least a quick little segment coming up, maybe next week. Uh, guy's out there working his ass off. So, Henry, up in Detroit, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks, Good everybody. Show. Good show. Appreciate you. We'll check you on the flip. All right, Pete. Have a good one. Later, Buckeye Nation. It's fun. Yeah.